Hello students, welcome to SAM classes. This chapter, Moving Charges and Magnetism, is one of the most important chapters and a lot of questions you can expect from this chapter. Around 5 to 6 per year is coming from Comet K. Now it can fluctuate, it can vary, but still the trend is good. So this chapter is very, very, very important. But what makes it more important is the questions which are coming from this chapter is directly formula based. If you remember the chapter, if you have gone through all the formulas very properly, you'll be able to solve each and every question. So only thing is you need to understand the chapter, you need to remember the formulas and you need to apply it. That's it. So cyclotron is not there and it is deleted. So we'll see what are the questions, what are the important topics in this. Okay. And so let's start the chapter. The first question that came on 2020, the radius of a circular part described by a charge particle, described by a charge particle of mass m, moving with velocity v perpendicular to the magnetic field. So see, this already we have discussed in the concept video. If you remember, here it was the concept video. So a charge particle, it is moving in a magnetic field. Okay. And so what is the radius of the, what is the circular path? The radius of the circular path is given by this formula. R is equal to mv by qb. R is equal to mv by qb. How did we got the radius? The centripetal force was what? mv square by r. And who is providing the centripetal force to move around the circle? This magnetic force. So QVB is equal to mv square by r. From there we get the formula of r. See directly if I remember the formula of r, r is equal to mv by qb. Directly I would have got the answer and I would have marked r is equal to mv by qb. So was it very difficult? Was it like very difficult? Okay. No. So it was very simple. Correct. So you need to understand. So what we needed to remember is the electron is moving in a circle. So who is giving, so what is the, in order to move in the circle, it needs a centripetal force. And who is providing that centripetal force? This magnetic force. That's it. Okay. Solve it, you get the answer. Clear everyone? Okay. So R is equal to MV by QB. A very simple question. 2021 question done. Let's see the next part. Okay. The particle of charge Q is moving inside a uniform magnetic field with a velocity and making an angle theta. See, the moment you understand that a particle is moving in a magnetic field, uniform magnetic field, but making an angle theta. So we did a concept on that. What was the concept? The concept was this. See, this is a particle moving in this, okay. Making an angle what? Theta. Here, making an angle what? Theta. So what we do, we break the velocity in terms of two, V perpendicular and V parallel. And what we see, because of the, V parallel, it is able to make a what? It is able to move in X direction and because of V perpendicular, it is able to move and make a circle. So how it is moving? It is making due to the V perpendicular, it is making a circle and then it is moving, making a circle moving, making a circle moving, making a circle moving. So this kind of path is known as helical path. Okay. So here the answer will be helical. See how simple questions directly from the concepts they have picked up. Okay. Let's see the next question. With usual notations, the correct form of by its law. See, directly formula. What do you mean by by its law? DB is equal to vector mu naught i by 4 pi, correct, sir? Okay. We know DL vector cross R vector divided by R cube. Correct. Everybody knows that. By its law, directly we can remember it. Okay. In the vector form, very important. A lot of times have been asked in these kinds of questions. And you can expect that in NEAT also sometimes, okay? So very simple, directly, this will be the answer. Clear, everyone? Now coming on to the next question, again, 2020, see how many questions we got from 2020. The current sensitivity of a moving coil galvanometer is increased by 20%. Now what you have done is, you have increased the current sensitivity by 20%. So new will be what? Old plus 20%, correct. So that is equal to 120 by 100. Now what about voltage sensitivity? They said voltage sensitivity new one will be equal to what? See old voltage sensitivity sensitivity was what? Current sensitivity by R. Okay. Now they said that the current what is a resistance has changed and it became 1.5 times the new one. 1.5 times the original one. So R dash is equal to what? 3 by 2 R. Correct. So Vs dash is equal to what? 
new current sensitivity by new resistance. So that is equal to put the values. That's it. One twenty by hundred. Is that is equal to two by three R. So what we got four by five of Vs. So four by five means what? Multiply by twenty, eighty percent. Top and bottom multiply with twenty, eighty percent. So it's eighty percent of the original one. Okay. So eighty percent of original one. Okay. Everybody, very simple question. Okay. So what you have done in this question again? Understand? So you have taken the current sensitivity as Is. Now this is a twenty percent increase. Correct. So 20% increase means what? Old plus 20 by 100 of original or old, whatever it is. So we'll get 120 by 100 of Is. Now, what this said is Vs is equal to what? Voltage sensitivity is what? Current sensitivity by R. Okay. So new voltage sensitivity will be what? New current sensitivity divided by the resistor. Now, what about resistor? This said the new resistor is three by two times. Means 1.5 times the old one or the original, so 3 by 2R multiply it, you get the answer. That's it. Okay. So very simple question. Let's see the next question. See, T is the time period of a revolution of a charged particle of mass m and charge q, moving with velocity in uniform circular fit. See again, same thing. Understand, students? Okay. Very, very, very important. These all four formulas very, very, very important. One this. Again, after that time period, again after that omega. Okay, so these three formulas, one, two, and three, very very important. What is the time period formula? Two pi m by q b. What is the time period formula? Two pi m by q b. So everybody knows this formula. So let's see how do we solve it. So time period is equal to t is equal to what? Two pi m by q b. Two pi m by q b. Now what they're telling that the magnetic field has increased and it became double. So B is equal to two B. So time period equal to two pi m by Q into two B. So two you take it out B. So this is what T by two. That's it. So just tell me anything anywhere. I have done like very critical or rocket science or something like that. No, nothing. I've just known the formulas. I've just written the formulas and then put the values. That's it. Nothing more than that. I have done. Correct. Now, same thing. Formulas are very, very, very important for this chapter. So here, now let's see the next question. An electron, a proton, and a neutron. So very important. What what we have here? We have one the electron, one proton, and one neutron. They're moving parallel to each other in the same direction with equal velocity. Enters a uniform magnetic field. So you need to remember one thing. Whenever a charged particle, whenever a charged particle, if I take it, enters charged particle when it enters. A magnetic field. So what happens? A force acts on it. Force acts. Okay. And what is the the formula of the force? F is equal to Q into velocity cross B. V cross B. Velocity cross B. Okay. Now what happens is now which is perpendicular to the motion. Now magnetic field is downward. Correct. We know that. So what happens for a charged particle like what do you say? This one. Electron negatively charged, proton positively charged, and neutron no charge. So since it has no charge, so no force. Correct. So no force acts. So you can see here and here these two options can be. This is not. This is not valid. This is not valid. Now, proton is positively charged, electron is negatively charged. So what we need to do? We need to do what? We need to apply this formula. How do you apply this formula? Right hand thumb rule. What will apply? Right hand thumb rule. How? Uh, what do you say? Put your palm in the direction of what? Velocity. Let's say for the proton, put it in like this. Put your palm like this in the direction of velocity. Correct. Now what do you do? Curl it along the magnetic field. Curl it along the magnetic field. Curl it along the magnetic field. Okay. So inside down you need to curl. Okay. Curl it downward. So the moment you curl it downward. The force which is acting, the force which will act, you will see your thumb is pointing in the direction of force, and that is given by this. So for a proton, for a proton positively charged particle, the force will be like this, and for electron, since it is negative, it will be opposite. So answer is this. Clear, everyone? If you have doubt in this question, do put it down in the comment section. We'll again explain it. Very simple. What do you have to do? We basically we are finding V cross V. Nothing more than that. Velocity cross the magnetic field. 
So velocity cross magnetic field, give me directions of force. That's it. <clears throat> Clear everyone? Now let's see the next part. The dimensional formula of magnetic flux. The dimensional formula of magnetic flux. Very simple question. So first we need to understand what is flux. Flux is sir formula is B dot A. Correct. So B A cos theta. Who cares about cos theta? Constant. Correct. It's a trigonometrical what is a ratio, not a constant, trigonometrical ratio. So we don't have to worry. Now here we have B, we have A. How do you find the B? So we remember one formula. Sir, F is equal to QVB. I said yes. So B is equal to what? F by QV. Correct? I said yes. Now, sir, how do you find the force? Yes, very easy. Force is equal to what? ML power T power minus 2 by charge is what? Now, current is equal to charge by time. So charge is equal to what? Current into time. So that is equal to ampere second or ampere time for the dimension part. Okay, so we got a t and for the velocity l t power minus 1. So what we got m a inverse t power minus 2. Very simple. We got it till here. Now what about rest? We got the force. We got the magnetic field. Now what do you have to find? We have to find phi. So phi is equal to b dot a. So b we got it as m a inverse t power minus 2 into area. What is area student? What is the formula of area? L square. What correct? Length into breadth. So L square. Dimension. So M A inverse T power minus 2 L square. That's it. So which one answer is this? Fourth one. Clear. So you need to understand very simple if you remember the formulas almost all of the question directly you can solve it. Now see a 2019 question directly ACL. Ampere circuit and law. See, a lot of people will write this answer. This is wrong. It's line integral B dot DL is equal to mu naught I. That's it. So you need to remember. Okay. Means line integral means area along that curve. Okay. Next question. A wire of cross section is bent to form a circular loop. See, even if I don't know anything, what I'll do, my current is coming from here. Correct. Okay. After this, it is getting divided into one part. One is this one, I1 current. This is I2 current. So whatever the magnetic field I1 will generate at the center, same opposite magnetic field I2 will generate at the center. So by net magnetic field will be what? Zero. Clear? So even if I don't know the exact value and figure out, we'll use the formula B is equal to what? Mu naught by 4 pi I1 L1 sin 90 by R square by its law. You can use the deduction, basic. Symmetry is there. Okay. The same part of I1 and same part of I2 is there. One inside, one opposite. Okay. Both, what do you say? One is going in a clockwise direction. The other is going in an anti-clockwise direction. So the magnetic field will be what? Equal at the center and they'll cancel each other. That's it. Nothing more than that. Correct. So you need to understand. That's it. Next is again, let's see this question. See the direction of force on a charged particle moving with velocity V. In a magnetic field is, see this formula, F force is equal to what? Charge into velocity cross B. So whenever we do a cross product, let's say I have a A vector, I have a B vector. So whenever I do A cross B, I get a third vector C, which is perpendicular to both. C is perpendicular to A vector, C is perpendicular to B vector. So directly we can say perpendicular to both B and V. Perpendicular to both magnetic field and velocity. The next question what we have here is, so what they've given is a narrow beam of proton is there and a deuteron is there, okay? Having same momentum. See, this line is one of the most important line. So momentum of same means, ma what is momentum everybody? Sir, don't know sir, momentum very tough concept. Huh? So what is momentum? Mass, product of mass and velocity. So what they're telling that mass of proton into velocity of proton is equal to mass of what? Deuteron into velocity of deuteron. That's it. Correct. Once we know this. Now they're telling that find the ratio of the radius. Okay. They're making, they're moving. Whenever a charge particle enters a magnetic field, it does a circular motion. Okay. So what is the radius of that? R is equal to what? MV by QB. MV by QB. See Q is same. So R of P is equal to mass of P by V of P by charge of proton into magnetic field. So magnetic field is same for everyone. So don't need to worry. 
So what about this MV? MPVP means mass of proton and what is the velocity of proton. Now if I see for a deuteron, mass of deuteron into velocity of deuteron. Now this top and top numerator value for both of them is same because they have the same momentum. What about charge? See a proton has one charge and a deuteron also has one charge. The difference is the number of neutrons. Okay. So again charge is same, Q is same. So the ratio will be what? 1 is to 1. Now you only tell me what is difficult here. Tell me. Anything difficult here? No. That's it. Clear. So nothing here is difficult. Okay. Dear students, nothing is difficult. You just need to understand and think a bit. The next question that we have 2019, an element is there DL equal to DX into I cap. So we need to understand our length element is what? Along X direction. Along X, my length element, DL element is like this. Now they're telling that it's carrying some current to I, to A. The direction of the magnetic field at a point on Y axis. So we are finding the magnetic field on Y axis. And how much distance? 0.5 meter above. So my R vector, if you remember the formula, okay, I haven't taken the formula here. If you remember the formula, by its of its law, correct. So let's see the by its of its law. Okay, you'll understand more better. So if you see here in by its of its law, let's make call. Let's see here one second, just one second. So if you understand the by its Severs law, this is my length element, okay? And this is the radius vector, correct? And we are doing a cross on that. So here, my length element is along this and my radius vector is along this. So if I do, what you say, a cross, if I do a vector product, okay, if I take my hand, if I take my, what is it, palm like this and try to fold it like this, my thumb will point in the positive direction of z thumb points in the what positive direction of z you can do it on yourself also keep your thumb on the x-axis keep your hand like uh, right hand open on the x-axis and try to curl around y and try to curl around y you will get the positive z that's it so that is very simple question we got it see magnetic effect of current was discovered by whom directly you can write hans ostert sir okay so what we have went through is all the questions, almost 95% of them are very simple, very straightforward. So if you practice, if you revise the topics, you'll be able to answer very quickly.